Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partners podcast series brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. I'm your host, Greg Phelps, along with Tifa Snow, and our topic today is different types of dementia. Being the curious host I am, I googled, uh, how many types of dementia are there? And um, not surprisingly, Tifa, it ranged anywhere from about 200 to over 400. Another article named the seven types of dementia, while another listed four types of dementia. I'm confused. I know it doesn't take much, but I'm confused. And, and why does it even matter that I have to know how many there are? Yeah, well, you know, it, you really do want to know some basics because we are talking about various different conditions because dementia is a syndrome. It's not a specific diagnosis. So recognizing where am I under this umbrella? I mean, because, yeah, I know at least two parts of the brain are dying and that it's progressive and that... Um, we don't have cures, but, you know, it would be very different if the visual cortex was dying and the memory area was damaged before the motor sensory uh, area was damaged versus, you know, this one is more of an auditory problem combined with a wayfinding problem as a starter. Sure. So it turns out, you know, how you start, where it all starts. Um, and how it progresses really can help us as care partners and family members and friends wrap our head around what do they have and what's starting to fray and what's gone so that I can give the right kind of support and the right environmental support too. When I was thinking about it earlier, I was a little bit concerned about labeling, but then I realized mm -hmm. if somebody says I've got cancer, everybody always goes, what kind? What kind? Yeah. Because, yeah, it, because it really makes a difference. It really does make a difference. And there's a huge difference. And so sometimes when people talk about different types of dementia, they're talking about the major categories um, that would be like Alzheimer's type dementia, Lewy body type dementia, frontal temporal type dementia, vascular type dementia, and then a whole bunch of various ones that are different. Um, some that are genetically linked, some that aren't. Um, some that are related to alcohol use or drug use. Um, some that might be more related to uh, consuming protein that has a virus in it. Um, you know, some that that come from deep within the brain and some that are very different. So, you know. We used to hear all the time, we used to hear all the time, Alzheimer's. And, and now we've, we've sort of moved people away from that, realizing that what, it's just one of Many. However, we're many we're talking about, but it's, still it's the not most even one, it? Greg. Okay, so I'm going to pause because it's not <laughs> even one. It's a group of dementias, even the kinds of Alzheimer's. Because if you have a type, let's say, now it's caused by beta amyloid. Well, it's related to, not caused by. It's related to having beta amyloid plaque formations and tau pathologies, but. Um, it could be a genetic coding that you get from one parent that's dominant and happens early in life called a presenile gene, and you will be developing your Alzheimer's young. Or it could be a APOE3 allele, which is a very different cause of your Alzheimer's type dementia. Or it could be, and this is where um, some dementias are named for the physician who first discovered them, and some we have changed the name. So where it used to be Pick's disease, which was a frontal temporal dementia, now what we have is frontal variant or behavioral variant of frontal temporal dementia. So it's gotten more complex in some ways because we're in some cases they're taking away the doctor's name. So like Benson's disease uh, is now postcortical atrophy. So you got to stay on top of this stuff, you know, because they change the names on things, change the label. And then they change the names. So sometimes it's like, well, what's Benson's disease? Well, that's postcortical atrophy. Wait, but what's, but I thought postcortical atrophy was postcortical. In other words, it's the visual center. It starts in your visual center and moves forward. That's correct. Well, what's Benson's disease? Well, that's what it used to be called. And some people still call it that. But that's that's the same thing, essentially. So from having been around you and knowing your schedule, <laughs> when do you find time to study up on all of these things that we don't normally see you talking about? 
Yeah, well, I mean, the good news about being in practice for over 40 plus years is that I've had many opportunities to be in many situations and to learn a lot. But then every time I run across somebody living with a dementia, it's an opportunity to sort of explore well, I wonder what kind of dementia or dementias they might be living with and what are the symptoms that are getting in their way and what are their abilities that are holding them up and what do families need to understand so that they can be supportive in better ways and what a staff need to understand so they quit being frustrated in ways that I can't fix. They got to start looking at it differently. And it really does to, you know, so for me, I got to learn this stuff so I can be supportive in ways people find helpful. So this is useful to families and to care partners? Yeah. So if I hear that somebody has Lewy body disease, then my brain goes, okay, so, um, so I'm curious, because usually there's at least five symptoms that I might be looking for. Um, How sleep going for you guys? (sighs) Okay. Well, how about, have there been any falls that have been unexplained? Yeah, lots. Okay. How about, uh, do they seem to have a sense of smell? Well, you know, it's funny. I don't, you know, so what I can do is sort of run through some common symptoms and we can see, verify or go, huh, because it could be the, oh, I wonder if that's why she's not eating very much. Well, when you can't really taste real well and you can't really smell real well, but I do want to be careful that it's not COVID, post COVID symptoms that are still hanging out on the long haul COVID, um, which we're starting to consider the possibility that it may be, there may be a dementia associated with COVID having gotten it and recovered. But Tipo, this, this is one of the subjects that, you know, we have roughly 10 minutes for our podcasts <laughs> and, and, and we can't get into everything. So how does someone get more information? If I'm a care partner working in a facility, if I'm a family member, what sort of things might you offer? Yeah. So, I mean, you can always go in the States, you can go to the National Institute on Health. They, they have some incredible pages of information if you know what you're looking for already. The problem is if you don't know what you're looking for, it can just be a maze. And so one of the things to do is to check out, we have an umbrella and we have an umbrella card, but we also have people to help you. And, and, and so we have info sheets and we have resources, but we have people who can help you go through that information by being supportive to you as you're trying to scope out and figure out, well, she has this and she has this. And it's like one of our questions often will be, so about how long ago did you first notice it now that you know about it? When you think back, what were some of the first things you noticed? So we can be helpful at helping people figure out some things so that they sort of have a direction of travel as they're moving forward. So come and talk to us. Important that families know that they're not alone in this journey, oh. that there is somebody out there that can help them sort through the information that's available. If you go on the internet, you can simply be overwhelmed. You can. And sometimes when you go to the doctor, it's like, well, it's Alzheimer's. What else do you need to know? And it's yep. like, go away. Well, Appointment's over. Uh, I, you know, Lewy body disease. What do you mean Lewy body disease? Well, it's a kind of dementia. And it's like, uh, okay. And it's, you know, uh, it's a hard one. And it's like, oh dear. So what we try to do is, is really connect people with the person that they're working with and, and what it is that's happening to that person so that they have a better handle on how to be supportive and how to learn the art of letting go of what is not within your control and start to be more curious about that, which is. Deepa, thank you very much. My pleasure, Greg. You've been listening to the Dementia Care Partners podcast series brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. If you need more information about dementia, check out our website at www.tipasnow.com. Hi, I'm Tipa Snow, and you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Oh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www.tipasnow.com, where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.